Hello again. In this episode of Peterson Podcast, I would like to talk a little bit about how to take a DVD that you own and convert that into a digital file that then you can move onto your iTunes or your iPod. And so before I can do this, though, I really need to have you download three different programs. Those three programs are Handbrake, DVD for three, and then make sure that your iTunes is downloaded or updated. You might already have iTunes, but make sure it's updated to iTunes 10. And to find these programs, what I've done is I put them all onto my webpage. So go to Middle School North webpage, Teacher Webs, and then click on fourth nine weeks because that is the nine weeks that we're going on our field trip. And then just scroll down to where it says DVD to iTunes tools. And I have all three of those as uh, downloads for you. Just one word of warning though, on DVD 4.3, the download site is pretty busy. So make sure you click on Download Now, which is this part right here. Sometimes you will see the Start Downloads and things like that. If this gives you any trouble, um, like here at school, it will be blocked. Just go to the Mirror site, click to download here at the Mirror site, and that is an exact same copy of the one that's here. But just beware of these other banners that make it look like those are the download sites. Handbrake is a fairly easy um, site to download from. And of course iTunes is very simple to get that downloaded. Once you've gotten those downloaded, you really have all the tools that you need. Let's first talk about DVD 4.3. What that is, is it's a video decryptor which means it kind of runs in the background on your computer. And I have a DVD here of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and I'm going to put that into my computer. And what I want you to watch is this little smiley face down here at the bottom of my screen. That is DVD 4.3 running. And when I actually put it into my computer, what you'll notice is that little smiley face will change to a little devil's head. And that means that it's starting to decrypt the information. Once it has decrypted all the information on that DVD, it will then turn to a green smiley face. It could take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your computer, how many other applications you're running, how long the movie is that you're looking at. You can see for me it took maybe 20, 30 seconds in order to decrypt all that information. I then close that screen and I'm ready to start Handbrake. What Handbrake does is it will take that information and convert it into a file that then I can put onto my iPod. And you'll notice there are several presets. There's iPod, iPod Touch, iPhone, and iPad. A good way to look at these is to say small, medium, large, and extra large. You might say to yourself, well, extra large, that's the size I want. You know, biggest is always better. But you also have to consider that size also relates to the file size of the um, movie that you're going to be saving. So I'm going to be watching mine on an iPod Touch, and so that's a good kind of medium size file. I can even watch that on my iPod phone or iPhone or even an iPad or even on the computer, but it's going to be kind of, you know, grainy. It'll be a little bit more pixelated, but I'm putting it on an iPod Touch, so I really don't care how it looks so much as long as it's decent and it's not a huge file so I can put more than one movie on there. Now I need to identify the source and you can see it's already found it. It says you know, in your D drive you have Willy Wonka. So I'm going to click on that. Now if you could see my hard drive and my DVD drive you would notice it's spinning. What it's doing now is Handbrake is going through and scanning the source to kind of 
get everything organized. If you've ever looked at a DVD, you might have noticed that it's actually broken into several chapters. Then those chapters, you can go to um, each of those chapters to see you know, different parts of a movie um, or you can watch the whole movie together. Well, we're going to want to watch this whole movie together, and you can see that it has found one of 13, now two of 13. And, and so this could actually take a little while. What I like to do is when this, I set this up, I'll go and get a drink of water or you know, just kind of take some care of some paperwork or things like that. I don't really want to be doing a lot of things on my computer because – if I'm doing things on my computer, it's thinking about that and not necessarily thinking about processing these different titles. And so the less you do on your computer, the faster it will get done. And so maybe you have a book to read or something like that. It shouldn't take more than a minute or two, depending on, again, the size of your um, movie that you want to catalog and the, the processing speed of your computer. Okay, so now we've found Willy Wonka, one title. It's about an hour and 40 minutes long, and you can see there are one of 40 chapters. So I'm good to go. Um, I picked iPod Touch, so it has these dimensions. And you'll want to make sure that you know where you're putting this file. And if you can see this, what I've done is I actually made a special folder on my desktop called Videos. And that's where I just put all my videos, and then I click Start. Now, when you click Start, you're going to want to go again and do some errands, because depending on the speed of your computer, this could take a little bit of time. Um, for a two-hour movie, it might take 40 minutes to an hour if you have a fairly fast computer. If you've got a slow computer, you might want to set it up and go to bed, because it could take a little bit of time. Now, just to review, all we've done is take that DVD and save it into a digital format. You can see it's an M4V file. I haven't even started talking about iTunes yet. So I now have a Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory saved as a digital file. I've clicked Start. It's run, its, run through its processing, and now it's saved that file. So let's then look at how I'm going to pull this into iTunes. Okay, so now you can see that my iPod is into my library. And the first thing I want to do is I want to add that movie that I've already saved. But iTunes can't find that movie without me telling it where it's at. So I need to go to File, Add File to Library, and you can see I've gone to my desktop videos folder, and I look for the movie. Now, remember, I didn't put Willy Wonka in here, but I did put a SpongeBob episode. And so I'm going to double-click on that SpongeBob episode, and you can see now iTunes has found it. If I were to double-click on this, I could even preview it to make sure that we're all good on that and that it works. Okay. But I don't just want it in iTunes. I want it on my iPod. So I'm going to click on Devices, then Movies, and I want to make sure that I click on Sync Movies. And then when I click Apply, it will then actually save that episode onto my iPod. And so there are several different steps that I just went through. Remember, it's File, Add File to Library, that brings the file into iTunes. And then I need to tell my iPod that, hey, I want you to put that movie on there also. I want you, you know, to include that file. So that is the end of this week's podcast. Thank you so much. Have a good day.